I'm Mike Stanton. It's April 29th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Chris Plossy from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Chris, uh, thanks for being here. Thanks, uh, kind of a steady as she goes week as far as that goes in the, the municipal market for 2022. Uh, rates are up about four basis points on both the short and the long end. Uh, again, munis underperformed uh, their treasury market uh, counterparts. Uh, we saw the uh, ratio of muni yields to AAA treasury yields uh, rising all the way to 105% by the end of this week. Um, and on the outflow side, another $2.2 billion of outflows from municipal bond mutual funds, uh, slightly less than last week. Uh, that was, uh, as expected, the previous week was uh, during the tax deadline. That's often a time of uh, elevated outflows for the muni market, but still $2.2 billion a week is a, is a large number. Uh, really just more of what we've seen uh, year to date uh, across the market. What kind of sentiment have you been hearing? Uh, so with those outflows, the things like that, this week, things changed a little bit. We, we had the continued outflows, but this week, we actually had a decent calendar to price. This week, the calendar was very focused on the primary market. There was a $3 billion UCAL medical center deal that was closely monitored by both the buy side and the dealer community. So that allowed everybody to focus on something other than their current portfolios and the losses that they had and be able to try to revamp and get some higher yields in that portfolio. So that's a great point, Chris. Obviously, uh, historically in the muni market, new issues is where uh, so much of the activity is focused because that's where pricing is validated. Do you feel that, and you know, so many of secondary market issues are not necessarily liquid on their own name in any given week. Do you feel that people have more certainty in their uh, the valuations on their tax and portfolios now that we've had a heavy week of pricing? Yeah, I mean, as the market settles in, people get, do get a little bit more confident. They're able to look at their portfolios and look at where their book yields are relative to where the new issues are pricing and be as nimble as they can in and out of the secondary and into the primary market to where they, they feel is a little bit more stable. So uh, specifically for BAM, what kind of activity were, were you involved in the uh, primary market? Um, BAM had a pretty active week this week in the primary markets. There were 253 million bonds of price. Um, on in the primary market. So we had 22 transactions across 11 states this week. Um, some of the, the larger deals that we had was a Whitehall Coplay School District deal in Pennsylvania. That was a competitive sale bought by Jenny Montgomery. There was uh, an Indiana University of Pennsylvania deal that was uh, 19 million with PNC. That was a negotiated transaction. And then there was also a competitive sale for Harris County Mud number 400 in Texas. And that was bought by RW Baird. Interesting diversity of credits. And looking ahead for this uh, calendar, you, you said the uh, market-wide calendar might not be as heavy. What, uh, what are you seeing? Right. So this week is a little bit more muted compared to this week. There's roughly $4.8 billion of uh, primary market volume expected. And roughly a billion of that is in one transaction with the, uh, the TBTA payroll mobility tax transaction. So that'll take up a fair amount of the time in the calendar in itself. So not as robust as this week. So we'll see what happens in the secondary markets. And as we always see in a period like this where rates have moved uh, significantly, there is a fairly large day-to-day -day calendar of transactions uh, where people are looking for market conditions uh, to let them come into the market and uh, execute refund things generally. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, people are always looking at interest rates and see where they are, um, maybe coming into the new market with new money or look at the refunding deals to see where they can lower debt service costs across their, uh, their profile. Great. So we'll remember that $4.8 billion forecast next week. Uh, see what uh, the, the final number turns into. Uh, thanks for your time and have a great weekend. Thanks, Mike.